history is full of firsts. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Many of those firsts shaped our way of life. For 70 years, KPRC Channel 2 has been proud to be pioneers in shaping television and Houston history. Isn't it good to work for a place that has a sense of history? And indeed it is. See, taking a prisoner from spring to compensation follows. If you have something you'd like Channel 2 Investigates to check out, call the tip line at 713-223-TIPS or email investigates at clicktohouston.com. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Today. Some breaking news this morning. Two men shot at a sports bar at closing time. Ahead what deputies say happened before a security guard opened fire. Also, a New York City police officer is in the hospital after he was shot in the face. Ahead why investigators say this was an assassination attempt. How about a look at the radar? Mostly clear right now, but Cambrell says we'll see showers in a few hours, so don't forget that umbrella, but just enjoy it for now. It's not yeah. too bad. Good morning. Good Sunday morning. Enjoy these next few hours. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good uh, the first part of the day is a good day. I mean, it's, yeah. we have some nuisance showers out there, but nothing that's going to cause you any problems. And later on this afternoon, we'll see an increase in shower and rain activity going into Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Mm -hmm. That's going to be the double umbrella day. Just putting yes. it out there for you right now. Hey, our Clip 2 Pins family took advantage of the beautiful uh, Ooh, full moon that's last a nice night. Shot. That is a beautiful shot down in San Leon there. Full snow moon over Galveston Bay. Mm. Look out there. Look at East Beach right now. The clouds are clouds. Uh, waves are a little bit higher than normal. Uh, that's because we've got that east south, that southeast wind that's in play, and it's been helping pushing in that warm air in. 66 degrees in Galveston, Hobby 66, Bush at 64, Katy 66 degrees. It's normally 65 degrees for a high temperature this time of the day. So many of you are saying, this doesn't feel like it's been a cold winter at all. You're right. East southeast winds at 11 miles per hour currently. So here's a weather story. Starting out this morning, a couple of sprinkles out there. Don't worry about it. It's not going to mess up your day. Shouldn't cause anything to go indoors. Afternoon, we'll see some increased shower chances, especially late afternoon. We're going to be in the mid 70s with our highs, and then a rainy start to the week. Here's exact track radar. See, this is not, this is not really rain, but it's, it's the little schmutz that's out there. People are going to schmutz, meteorology term. And it's not really a term, but it's my term. You get the picture. It's going to be uh, humid out there. See, just look at the state here. Look at the temperatures that are going. 64, 58 degrees with the wind coming from the south. All of that going up. The dew points are really high as well. You can see that 61, 58, 53, where there's drier and drier on either side of that. That sets up some pretty good weather going on here. Futurecast model indicates what we'll be dealing with. We'll talk about that in detail and look at the 10-day forecast coming up. Here's your hour by hour look with those rain chances going up as we go through the afternoon. 75 degrees should be about your high. We like that. All right. Thank you, Cam Brown. See you in a bit. And now an update to breaking news that we first brought you at six. One man killed, another wounded after both were shot at a sports bar. Deputies say a security guard shot both of them, and now deputies are trying to figure out if that shooting was justified. Happened at the Ojos Locos Sports Cantina off the North Freeway in Barron Springs. 
Channel 2's Taisha Walker live at the business with the latest information. Taisha? Yeah, investigators are still out here six hours now and counting. The medical examiner actually just pulled up to the scene within the last five minutes. Uh, you can't really see much now, but the door does have shattered glass, which looks like maybe one of the bullets might have hit it during that shooting. Deputies tell us that an armed security guard was trying to shut things down at the bar around 2 o'clock this morning when a group of people refused to leave. There was an altercation between the guard and the group. Deputies say the security guard pulled out his gun and shot two people killing one here at the scene and sending the other person to a hospital in stable condition. Witnesses say they saw the guard waving a gun before the shooting, telling people to get out of the bar, then heard about three gunshots later. Uh, we know that Sheriff Gonzalez says that they are still working to get all of these people's account and piece everything together. So this scene is still unfolding. We had a, a lot of people inside the establishment still at the time, and uh, our investigators are now uh, trying to get to the bottom of it and then uh, trying to determine what the next steps might be in the investigation. Yeah, and at this point, no one is in custody and no charges have been filed. Quitting live, Taisha Walker, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Taisha, thank you. Breaking news now, New York authorities searching for a suspect in what they're calling an assassination attempt on police officers. Here's a look at that suspect. Authorities say the suspect opened fire on two officers sitting in a marked van in the Bronx on Saturday. The suspect allegedly walked up to the car and asked a question, engaged in conversation, and then started shooting. One officer was hit in the neck and chin, is expected to be okay. The second officer was not hurt. By the grace of God, we are here talking about an officer that will be going home. Let me be very clear. This was an assassination attempt of two New York City police officers. So far, the suspect is being described as a man in his 20s or 30s. Two U.S. service members are dead and six others are hurt after an attack on a joint U.S.-Afghan operation on Saturday. Colonel Sonny Leggett says happened near the Nangahar province of Afghanistan. Wounded service members now receiving medical treatment at a U.S. facility there. Current reports indicate a person in an Afghan uniform opened fire on the combined U.S. and Afghan forces using a machine gun. An investigation, of course, is ongoing. This morning, a woman is in the hospital after investigators say that she slammed her pickup into a fire truck. Now they're trying to figure out if she was drunk, since there is evidence she did not try to stop. This happened near the Northwest Freeway and 43rd Street around 10 o'clock last night. Police say the fire truck was blocking an area for a DWI crash when it was hit by the pickup. The woman was partially thrown from that truck and had to be cut out. She was rushed to the hospital, is expected to survive. New this morning, another crash. This one, witnesses say a woman was driving the wrong way at speeds of nearly 100 miles per hour before she hit a bus stop. Happened at Austin and Franklin in downtown Houston, and you can see the result. The woman was stuck under the truck's dashboard, had to be extricated out by firefighters. Police have not released her condition. Also new this morning, a man is recovering in the hospital after police say that he was shot by thieves at a place many of us feel safe, a city park. This all happened at Keith Weiss Park near Aldine Westfield and Aldine Mail Route Road around 10 o'clock last night. Investigators say two men walking on the park's trail were approached by, by a group of armed men, one with a handgun, one with a shotgun, another with a bat. Police say they robbed the other men and at some point the victim was shot. He was taken to the hospital but is expected to survive. Now to the latest on the spread of the coronavirus. Passengers now disembarking from a cruise ship today after Hong Kong authorities lifted a quarantine saying all crew members had been cleared of the coronavirus. The World Dream cruise ship had been placed under quarantine since it docked on Wednesday after eight mainland Chinese passengers on a voyage last month were diagnosed with a new strand of coronavirus. One of the two planes carrying Brazilian citizens, meanwhile, from China. Arriving in the South American country, passengers will be received by health authorities and quarantined there. The repatriation comes after a group of Brazilians in Wuhan released a video on YouTube asking the Brazilian government to evacuate them. A Michigan family was able to escape a carbon monoxide leak, all thanks to their loyal dog. They say if it wasn't for the good boy sounding the alarm, it could have been much worse. Diana and Gary Smith say their dog, Rascal, started acting strange last Tuesday. 
They took him to the vet but found out there was nothing wrong. But when the pooch started acting odd again when they got home, Diana texted a friend who suggested it might be a carbon monoxide leak. First guy said that we could, we could have a low level carbon monoxide leak that's not high enough to register on the detector. And who knows how long that may have been going on. Even though it's maybe not ready to kill you, it still is going to have effects on you. And particularly dogs, it uh, affects even more than people. That is incredible. Once Rascal was able to breathe in some fresh air, he was all back to normal. Wow. Thanks to him. Hey, the wait is finally over. The Roughneck season has officially begun. XFL team season kicked off in a big way last night when the home team took home a win. Houston defeated the Los Angeles Wildcats 37-17 to after trailing behind for most of the game. Quarterback P.J. Walker had a standout game. He had 272 passing yards, 26 rushing yards, four touchdowns. Players and coach June Jones say they were pleased with how fans responded to it all. The guys on the field was actually having a lot of fun. You know, we was, I know our side of the ball, our defense was having a, a ball out there. We was flying around, you know, we was picking each other up the whole time. I mean, it looked like they had the fans into the game. I could hear them, and so I don't know what they did, but, but uh, they, they, got, they got going. They got going, all right. The XFL League is a new professional football league with eight teams. The league also has teams in Seattle, Dallas, New York, St. Louis, Tampa Bay, and Washington, D.C. We are undefeated. <laughs> all right. Go well, Roughneck. Well, in other news, the Houston Astros have had a pretty tough offseason. They need all the support they can get from their fans. Coming up, a look when the team will hit the field for spring training. Plus, the big announcement from a local rodeo as we look at what's happening this week. Week. Coming up next. Um. Welcome back. All eyes will be on the Astros this week as they start their spring training after that sign stealing fallout. There are also a lot of celebrations this week, but we begin with a big announcement. On Monday, the Galveston County Fair and Rodeo will announce their entertainment lineup for 2020. The 14 musical acts will perform from April 17th to the 25th. The Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo, by the way, runs March 3rd through the 22nd. On Tuesday, voters in New Hampshire will choose their favorite Democratic nominee for president in the first primary election of the year. South Bend, Indiana Mayor Pete Buttigieg and Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders currently sit at the top of the polls there. On Wednesday, Federal Reserve Chair Jay Powell is expected to wrap up his testimony on monetary policy before Congress. Among other things, investors will be watching where interest rates are likely to go next. The Astros are back in action. They begin spring training on Thursday in West Palm Beach with new manager Dusty Baker and new general manager James Click. Look for live reports from Florida from our Channel 2 sports team. Galveston's 109th Mardi Gras celebration begins on Valentine's Day on Friday with lots of parades and parties, of course. The 10-day event expected to draw more than 300,000 people. And speaking of Valentine's Day Friday, spending this year on flowers, cards, chocolate and other items is expected to hit a record high of $27.4 billion with a B dollars. It's a whopping 32% more than last year, by the way, all according to the National Retail Federation. The folks who love snow, they are on cloud nine this weekend. Those people. Well, that's because of all the snow that fell in Colorado. Coming up next, a look at the beautiful sights that those skiers saw, but not the drivers, and the problems that the snow caused for drivers near the resorts. Welcome back, guys. We showed you yesterday the problem snow was causing at the Denver airport, right. also causing problems for drivers there. Imagine having to pull over on the highway and put those chains on your tires. Mm -hmm. No, thank you. I've done it. It's not fun. Portions of Interstate 70 near Denver had to be shut down because of all this snow. Your car, your wheels, they just don't work. But it's not all bad news. Ski resorts are reporting a huge turnout after all of that snow, nearly three feet of snow fell in the Loveland ski area Friday. Yesterday, the place was packed with skiers and snowboarders looking forward to enjoying the fresh powder. Now, see, that is the fun part. That is a lot of fun. I used to, I mean, I had two 
two annual passes when I lived in Utah to different ski resorts. It is fun. Because it just, there's little beats that powder. It's so fun. See, I'm thinking back 30, 30 years ago, 35 years ago, I skied my last <laughs> like, trip down. That's good. I'm yeah, good. you just separated shoulder there, and I said, uh, okay, I'm done. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yes, I know. I've wiped started, out several times. I started too late. <laughs> I started too late. I was a full-grown adult when I did it. You know, I think if I'd been younger and smaller, I'd been, you know. Anyway. It'll be in my book. They're on sale. <laughs> uh, it's coming up soon. Hey, I want to tell you something. Um, we have a, a click to pins picture, and yeah. I talked about this earlier, the moon. Yeah. I said, Boxy Ooh. took this in Garwood, and I said, man, she wow, takes great shot. pictures. Yeah. Well, Boxy sent me a note and said, she's not a she, it's a he. So, Boxy. <laughs> okay. Well, sorry. I want to make sure I made that oops. correction. That's not uh, a small thing. Sorry. I mean, people who know Boxy know that, you know. <laughs> Thank you, Boxy. You said, I've been, you know, where were you before now, Boxy? I've been calling your name for the last two years. Now you tell me. Love you, though. Love you. Hey, we've got a drought monitor up. I want to show you this because this is an area that is moderately dry. And this is an area that's severely dry. So we're expecting the rain over the next couple of days to really bring us a lot more rain in this area. We can use it because of this. Now along the coast there, there's not an issue there because they've got a lot of rain. And as it turns out, that area is expected to get the least amount of rain over the next several days related to this um, uh, storms, this series of storms that are going to be in place. Zach Track Radar, we're moving a little bit closer on the state here and the Futurecast models that have been in place and talking about what's been going on. Temperature 64, 58, 38. That colder air is not going to make it all the way down to us. It's not going to make it at all over the next couple of days here. We'll be colder going into Wednesday, Thursday, but for the next several days here, we'll have these temperatures that are on the warm side. Futurecast model will show these basically nuisance showers are going to, that are going to be around uh, today and throughout the afternoon, and especially as we go into the evening hours. And then tomorrow, we'll start to see a few showers to tomorrow morning. Some of the models are different in terms of where the rain will be and the intensity. Just know throughout this region, you know, people say, well, am I going to get rain? Everybody's going to get a chance to get some rain here over the next couple of days here. Uh, stronger storms, especially tomorrow afternoon, with the trailing edge of those storms coming through tomorrow afternoon and evening. And we get a little break going into Tuesday. We'll have more rain on Tuesday, more rain on Wednesday, and so the chance one to three inches, and especially uh, areas to the south, one to three areas to the north, even more. Right now, uh, the afternoon highs, which are normally 65, will be from the 72 to 75 degree range today. So a lot warmer than normal. Here's your hour by hour forecast. Then the rain chances go up as we go through the day to about the mid 70s. And then over the next 10 days, you notice these temperatures, 75, 70 degrees, 64 after that rain, with the rain on Wednesday as the front comes on through here. And then our temperatures stay on the cool side until we get to Valentine's Day. I took another look. And Valentine's Day really looks like it's going to be one of the nicer days of, mm -hmm. of the week. And why not? It's a day of love. <laughs> this morning, coming up on Houston Newsmakers, Harris County District Attorney Kim R. says the Make It Right Conference next weekend is perfect for someone looking to get their lives back on track. I happen to think that once somebody served their time, or especially once they've completed probation, or even have their case dismissed, that needs to come off their record when it can so that they are em as employable as possible. The unique conference that will help clear criminal records and also offer a chance to find a job. That's coming up on Houston Newsmakers this morning at 10.30. Important conversation coming up in a couple hours. Thanks, Cam Brown. If you had to pick a favorite food, chances are a lot of us would pick pizza. Pizza. Cheesecake, bagels, little <laughs> pizzas up there for sure, number one. Today you have a chance to eat some pizza because it's National Pizza Day. Take a look at this amazing spread. Coming what up next, that? we are celebrating by tossing dough and learning how to make one of these heart-shaped pizzas. We'll be right back. Lose weight with this stuff. Don't look good. Hey, we hope you know Valentine's Day is Friday. Time to get a move on it. And why spend money on the boring chocolates? How about a pizza? Yeah. Today is National Pizza Day. It is, absolutely. That's, Valentine's around the corner, so we got some really great treats here from Russo's New York Pizzeria. We got 23 stores right in Houston, and we make gourmet 
Pizza made from scratch, New York style. 23 places. So right, yes, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Woodlands, Tom Tomball, Pearland. We've got a new location, The Heights, opening up. There we go. Downtown Houston on Polk Street and West Timer, Chimney Rock. And we have pizzas with Nutella on them. Oh, yeah. The new, fresh, new Nutella with fresh strawberries. Right? I brought well, am some... I supposed to keep my New Year's resolution? <laughs> hey, the dice over. I even brought some New York <laughs> cheesecake, right? I can know to finish it off, right? All yeah. Right. Anyway, we're going to make some pizza today. All so right. I want to show you to make the crust, you're going to do it. Toss, oh, make make a circle, is, just like this, yeah, right? Is. Yes. Okay. So you're going to turn into a pizza roll in a few minutes, and then we're going to go down with, press it, down, down press it, and then go around like this. Okay. Tap it. Tap it. Tap it. Tap it. Tap it. Flip it over. Flip it over. Tap it again. Tap it again. And then your hand stretch it. Okay. Wait. What do you, you do? That? What are you doing? What are you doing? A little slow. Slowly watch. There you go. <laughs> oh man, it's going too fast. All right. Okay. All right. Just make a fist like right. this. There we go. Ready? Okay. And just toss. Oh, toss. There you go. Okay. Wow, nice try. Look Get at that. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Very nice. Eh? Oh, shit. Right. <laughs> you, you know me, I dropped, I dropped Panero's pizzas. Don't worry about okay, it. Okay, all right. Anyway, we're going to make a Nutella pizza with yeah, fresh strawberries. All right? About. Okay. Here we go. And we're going to get some Nutella chocolate. Kids love this stuff. Let's see if we can pass this. Kids love this stuff. We already failed. Yeah, so about the time of day, it's a great treat. We also got a promotion with uh, Patriot Paws this whole week. So we're donating proceeds. Oh. The Patriot Paws, yeah, for good oh, cause wow. for veterans, yeah. So when you dine at Russo's, a New York Pizzeria, any location, you buy a large New York style pizza, right? And we donate some of the proceeds to that good cause. Large New York style. Absolutely. You guys do those extra large, too. We do the giant party pizzas, which is yeah, yeah. phenomenal. It's, it's, it's amazing. And plenty of chocolate. So that's great. You know, <laughs> strawberries, right? All right. Hey, time we call it Fragola, Fragola. I'm not going to let this waste either. There we go. Top of strawberries. <laughs> Mine's not as pretty. Anyway, you want it, tastes good. right? And then you got a pot of sugar. Oh, yeah. Okay. There you go. Voila. You did a good job. Look at yours. Yeah, right? is it okay? Your, yours is better than uh, mine. No, there we go. We <laughs> got one down. It looks fantastic. It looks fantastic. 23 locations. Right. And uh, we can find those we locations. We deliver it. www.nypizzeria.com. Okay. It's on the website. And we got, you know, 23 stores around Houston. We deliver. We cater. We got great restaurants. And our menu is more than just pizza. We got pasta, salads, and sandwiches. Don't forget Valentine's Day. Do something special, maybe some pizza. You can Bravo. catch the segment online after the show under the community tab. And that's we'll right, that's right. Back. Excellent. Ciao, boys on. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Today. And breaking news this morning, a deadly shooting at a sports bar. It was closing just a few hours ago. Ahead what deputies say happened just before a security guard shot two men. Plus, people across Houston have seen bird invasions lately, but that's not what's flying around in Australia. Nope. Ahead, what the people down under are now dealing with. And a video going viral this morning ahead, how police department said goodbye and thanked a canine for his years of service now that he's retired. Looks like with ice cream. Oh, <laughs> those pups, they are so close to our hearts. We love them here. Well, thanks for waking up with us, 8.30 on your Sunday morning. How about the National Pizza Day and that cheesecake and the cannolis, which are, they get them by the truckload from New York, so by good. the way. Got to get out there and have some pizza, heart-shaped yeah. pizza. And got to get ready for Valentine's Day. You know, I got to figure out how we can get some food here on the morning show. It just kind of, <laughs> you know, how, you know, I don't know, between pizza now and, and bagels earlier this morning, how am I going to get my boyish figure back? That's, <laughs> that's the question. It's not going to happen like this, I tell tomorrow. you. Tomorrow. I know, tomorrow. We'll start. Baytown Bill out there on the... Thank you, Bill. Appreciate you sending that shot in and showing how beautiful it was yesterday. Here's a shot. We got the red flag out there today. That means, okay, it's not a good day to be out there unless you're really, really careful. Somebody's out here solving the problems of the world, sitting there thinking about what's going on. We got the surface a little bit higher today than it has been. Mid-60s for everybody today, and the winds are out of the east-southeast at 11 miles per hour. 71 degrees is going to be the high temperature, I think, in Galveston today. Water temperature is going to be about 61 degrees. Needed chest is going to be the surf height, so be very careful. Uh, it just good ideas not to go in, really. Uh, 20 percent chances for rain throughout, 20 to 30 percent chance we go up toward the low 70s for your temperature. And then if you look through the rest of the state, not much going on here, although we do see a few showers popping up here. There's a very light sprinkle, just nuisance showers we talked about. We're going to see that throughout. 68 to 71 to 72 degrees in the woodlands as we talk about the temperature going up and also the rain chances going up. Tomorrow morning when you wake up, it's going to be on the warm side, 64 to 68 degrees from 6 to 8 o'clock with rainy showers around. And then 
then by the afternoon, it's also going to be rainy, a little rain uh, out there with 64 to 74 degrees for your high temperature for tomorrow. We've got the 10-day forecast. Time out the rain we can expect for the next few days. We'll do that coming up. Looking forward to it. Thank you very much, Campbell. Now an update to breaking news that we've been tracking. A security guard that shoots two men and one of them has died. Deputies are now working to figure out what led to the shooting and if the guard was justified. This happened at the Ojos Locos Sports Cantina off the North Freeway and Barron Springs. And Channel 2 Taisha Walker is live at the business now with the latest for us. Taisha. Sophia, that man's body is still inside of the business. We know that medical examiners arrived within the last 30 minutes. The deadly shooting took place shortly after the business was trying to close around 2 o'clock this morning. Deputies tell us that the security guard who was armed at the time was trying to clear people out of the establishment. We're told that some people tried to linger around, and that's when deputies say the armed guard began to shoot toward two people. We know that one man is currently at the hospital in stable condition. The other man inside the business, he did not make it out of the establishment. Uh, we do know that deputies have been speaking with some of the witnesses to get their account as well. Um, right now, no charges have been uh, filed. We don't know if this case will go before a grand jury. That's still going to be determined as soon as they can examine the victim's body and get more information on what took place. Reporting live this morning. Taisha Walker, KPRC, Channel 2 News. All right, Taisha, thank you. Also breaking this morning, a deadly shooting behind a club in Atlanta. Investigators say one person was killed, two others injured around 1.30 this morning. Officials say an off-duty officer was in the area and fired at the suspects when they refused to drop their weapons. It's unclear if anyone was hit by the officer's gunfire. Police say multiple people were detained at the scene and several weapons were recovered, but so far, no word of any arrests. New this morning, a man in custody in Harris County after deputies say he barricaded himself inside an apartment and then started a fire inside that apartment overnight. Happened at the park at San Marino Apartment Homes at Empanada Drive near Highway 6. Investigators say it started when they got a call about a man beating his wife and threatening to set the apartment on fire. The woman was able to escape, but the man barricaded himself inside. When the deputies finally entered the apartment after four hours, they say... He was found passed out upstairs after drinking too much, and he was taken to the hospital. Now to Decision 2020. The Democratic candidates for president are crisscrossing New Hampshire this weekend before that state's primary on Tuesday. There seems to be a new sense of urgency, a new strategy for the candidates. A new NBC News Marist poll shows Bernie Sanders with a slim lead over Pete Buttigieg. Both Elizabeth Warren and Joe Biden are more than 10 points behind. With your help, we're going to win here in New Hampshire. We persist and we win. That is how I will be the first woman president of the United States of America. I can lead this party and unite our country. But I'll be damned if I'm going to stand by and lose my country. The NBC News Marist poll also indicates more than one in five voters could change their minds before they go to the ballot box, which means the race is still wide open. A kindergarten student in Mississippi got the surprise of a lifetime today. Ezra Knight's dad, Zachary, has been serving in the U.S. Navy overseas at Diego Garcia for about a year. This week, he returned home from deployment. You know what happens next. With the help of family and Ezra's teachers at the elementary school, he delivered quite the surprise. Zachary says he's excited to be able to come home and spend time with his loved ones. Hi, Ezra. It's not easy being away, missing a lot of things like the first day of school and uh, a lot among other things, t-ball games and stuff like that. So it's not, not very easy. Knight will be home now for 20 days. The family spends plans to spend, of course, some much needed quality time together. 
Hundreds of thousands of fruit bats have invaded a town in Australia. Now lawmakers are looking for a solution. The bat population of the town has reached an estimated 300,000 in recent weeks. That's 70 times more than the human population there. Officials say that lives could be at risk with emergency aircraft struggling to travel to and from the local hospital. One resident says the whole thing is like a bat tornado over oh, the town. Geez. Wow. That is so many. It's incredible just to look up and see all those bats. Oh, ooh, man, ooh. and dangerous for the helicopters. Good point. Here's a look at what's trending. A beloved top dog at an Arizona police department is retiring. Now the canine's last moments on duty are going viral. Bruno is a Belgian Malinois who's certified in patrol tactics and narcotics detection. His career with the Oro Valley Police Department spans seven human years. And the police department posted this video of Bruno's last day on the job. One five six canine Bruno will be ten forty two for his final time. Here you go, buddy. Just our unit standby for a special transmission. This transmission is for P9 Bruno. He has just finished his last shift on duty and is now headed for retirement. Thank you for your seven years of service. Thank you for all your hard work and for making sure your handler got home safe every night. After helping the thieves close to a million dollars in narcotics, you deserve some much earned belly rubs. <laughs> you can now chase rabbits instead of bad guys. Both of us at the department will miss you. Enjoy your retirement, Victor 156-2. Oh, just incredible and so sweet and deserving. Did you hear his resume? A million dollars in, in narcotics? Good work, buddy. Enjoy retirement, Bruno. You definitely deserve it. Come on, Bruno. The Oscars are tonight, but by now you probably know all the nominees. What you may not know, though, is how only one nominee up for supporting actor has never won an Oscar for acting, but he does have another Oscar in another category. Coming up next, we'll show you who that is and other pieces of Oscar trivia that you could find interesting. But first, here's Andy Sirota with a story he's working on Monday at 6. Hello there. It was a chilling video. Who is that? I'm your best friend. I'm Santa Claus. A stranger's voice heard speaking to an 8-year-old little girl after hacking into the family's ring camera system. She had to be terrified. What you could be doing right now to put your family at risk of a hack and the three things you can do right now to stay safe from hackers. Would-be attackers can get the geography, basically, of devices around the world that they can compromise, and they compromise them to gain access to things. Monday at 6 p.m.